Oh, from oh, that's right. Nice. So, <laughs> question, question nine. The functions f and g are defined for all real values of x by these, these two functions. Uh, f of x is 4x squared minus 12x, and g is ax plus b, where a and b are non-zero constants. Find the range of f. Well, the range of f is just the set of y values that it produces the outputs of f. And um, that's got a lot to do with, well, it's, it's a quadratic. So really, what we're, what we're thinking here is what are the turning points? Because wherever the turning point is on this quadratic, the range is, well, it's a positive x squared, so it's a, it's a happy curve, isn't it? So the range is all the points above that bit. So, actually, well, there's loads of ways you could go about doing this, because you know everything about quadratics. You could, you could complete the square. You could just find the roots and, and find the midpoint between the two roots, because that will tell you where the, the, uh, the vertex of the curve is. You could differentiate it. What, what do you want to do? Differentiate it. Right, okay. So um, if we differentiate it, if f of x is 4x squared squared minus 12x, derivative of dx is 8x minus 12, I should have written that as f dash dx. So when that's 0, if derivative of dx equals 0, 8x minus 12 is 0, giving us x is 3 over 2. So its, uh, it's stationary point is when x is 3 over 2, and f of 3 over 2, if we sub that back in, gives us 4 times 3 over 2 squared, which is 9, minus 12 times 3 over 2, uh, which is 8, which I think gives us... My, uh, I was expecting this to be... Hang on. Have we done this right? It's not 8. It was that bit that I did wrong. Yes, that's 18. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Right, that's a relief. So that's 9 minus 18, so we've got minus 9. Yeah. There you go. Happy now. Um, so this particular curve, do you remember what we, what we found there? It's 4x squared minus 12x. So if we factorise that, it's 4x brackets, x minus 3, so it's a graph that crosses at 0 and 3. And we've just found that the coordinates at this point are 3 over 2 minus 9. And so if we're thinking about the y values produced, that's the range of this function to all those values. It goes up forever up that direction, but at this point, the minimum point it has is minus 9. So the range is f of x greater than or equal to minus 9. Okay. Are we happy with that? That's how we find the range. Are you okay with that? Brilliant. Right. Part 2. What was part 2? Said. Um, explain why the function f has no inverse. In order for a function to have an inverse, it has to be a one-to-one -one function. Okay, remember that. Um, so in order to be an inverse, it must be a one-to-one -one function. I mean, let's, let's give an example of why it's not um, when f of x equals 0, x can be, zero, uh, what is it, 0 or 3. Is that okay? Does that, does that make sense? So we've given an example as well there why it's not a one-to-one -one function. We've given an example where it doesn't have it. Only one-to-one -one functions have an inverse, and it's not one-to-one. -one. Right. Slightly odd question, but there we go. Part three. Given that, oh, given that g, the inverse of g is the same as g of x for all values of x, show that a equals minus one. Ooh. 
That's exciting, isn't it? Well, let's let's see what we can do with that. Um, I mean, logically, thinking this through, hopefully we, we feel kind of instinctively that that's right, because a function and its inverse are reflected in the line y equals x. Now, if you reflect in the line y equals x, and you get the same result, if g of x and the inverse of g of x are the same, then that must mean that as a straight line, it must be perpendicular to the line y equals x. And a line perpendicular to y equals x has gradient minus 1. So it kind of feels like, if you, if you think it through that far, it feels like it's right, but we've got to show that. Um, so g of x was ax plus b. Let's find its inverse. So we find its inverse by saying y equals ax plus b and rearranging this to get x equals. So y minus b is ax. So x is y minus b over a. So the inverse is x minus b over a. And I'm wondering if this is the, the best way to do this. Um, and if they are equal to each other, x plus b is, yeah, here we go, is the same as x minus b over a. Well, well, how can we how can we do this? We don't. We're not. What we're not going to do is go around kind of doing too much with this equation. This is true for all values of x. We're saying that they're the same function, so we're not going to mess things up either side of it. What we are going to say is this says ax plus b is the same as one over a times x minus b over a. And if we compare coefficients on either side of this, look at the x coefficient. We're saying. A is the same as 1 over A. And if we look at the number coefficients, we're saying B is the same as minus B over A. And if we look at those simultaneous equations that we've got there, they're not much in the way of simultaneous equations, this one says A squared equals 1, which says A is plus or minus 1. And this equation says... A, B equals minus B, which says that A equals minus 1, if you write through by B. So both equations say the same thing, therefore A equals minus 1. And I think I would probably go with that as my way of doing it. I, I would expect that if you want to do a diagram kind of illustrate some of that idea about it being perpendicular to line Y equals X, and that, that means that the gradient must be minus 1, and you can do it that way. I think by talking through that logic, you could get the mark that way. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, there is also the thing that you could, faced with this equation here, you could sub in, if we're saying this is true for all values of x, I think this is what Josh is saying, you could sub in a few values of x and generate some simultaneous equations that would allow you to say that a equals minus 1. Also, be parallel to y, not parallel like it is y. Like not parallel. Yes, but that, hang on, it would only work. You're right. If it was y equals x, yeah, but nothing else. But nothing else. Then that would also be true. And why can't it be y equals x in the context of this question? There is, there is something that they've made sure, so they've ruled out that as a possibility. Okay, because B is a non-zero constant, so that means it can't be wiped with that. But, you, but you're right, I'm the only other thing that would be working. Ben, are you interfering with the camera and in doing so dropping your camera? <laughs> no. Well, you're, you're now famous on, um, what's that thing, YouTube, for having tried to do that. You know? The, the seven people who watch this video were going to know about you. Uh, right, part four. Given further that g of f of x is less than five, for all values of x, find the set of possible values of b. 
I, we need to we need to find g of f of x, don't we? That's going to be the first thing that we do with this. I think I'm going to run out of space, so I'm going to go on to a new page. Um, so we're going to find g of f of x. Oh, g of f of x. Right. That means into the function g, we're going to put the output of f, and the output of f was. Let's copy this real quick. 4x squared minus 12x. We're going to sub that into g. Now, this, this followed on. This said, given further that. So from that, we can take that a is minus 1. We're using a as minus 1. So that is minus x plus b. So we've got that. So we end up here with minus 4x squared plus 12x plus b as being the function g of f of x. What's that? That looks like a 6. It's a b. But um, what we have is that. What, what kind of a thing is this? It's a quadratic. It's a quadratic with a minus coefficient at the front of it. Which means it's an unhappy quadratic. It's a, a sad phased quadratic. Yeah. So what we've ended up with, after all of that, is a, a quadratic. And we've just been told in the question that for all values of x, it's less than 5. So, so this maximum point, well, yeah, it can't actually be 5. Yeah. Because it's, it's going to be less than five, but it's it's four point nine eight 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 eight. Okay, so that that point there is five. So this is it's come right back round. We started with thinking about stationary points and all of this, and it's come back to being about stationary points, hasn't it? It's saying that the y value of the stationary point, the maximum point, is five, or, or at most five. So let's let's work that out. Where would this have its stationary point? Well, we'll go right back. To the beginning with this, if we differentiate it, I don't think we need to show this again, but we want to do minus 8x plus 12 we get. So when is that equal to 0? If dy by dx is 0, we've got 8, uh, 8x being equal to 12. So x is 3 over 2. I didn't need to do that again because it's the same. All we've done is move the graph up, but anyway. Um, so we've got that as being the stationary point. So if we sub this in, we now know that that maximum point is less than 5. We know that minus 4 times 3 over 2 squared plus 12 times 3 over 2 plus b is less than 5. And so all we're left to do is to work out what we've got here. This is minus 9, I think. Yeah. Plus 9. Oh, that's not 9. I did that before. Plus 18. Plus b is less than 5. So at the end of all of that, b must be less than... Minus 4. Is that what I got last time I did it? <laughs> I did. I got B is less than minus 4. There we go. For God's sake. Great. Calculator task day. And that's maths.